I went to Mysore first time in '96. Um, uh, we were three people from uh, Helsinki, and um, we went with Lino Miele, this Italian yoga teacher. And that was still like, you could call it like old Mysore. There was, uh, uh, there was people walking and using bicycle, and some people had horses and. Not so many cars, not so many scooters. So there's the time when you know people stayed in the small, you know, rooms, little just mattress on the floor, and this kind of very simple life. And there was, um, well, it was always interesting. You know, we I practiced Ashtanga already for seven years, and then um, went to Mysore. We didn't in the beginning know so much about yoga and yoga history and the culture, Indian culture. But in 96 we went and we started to study uh, more seriously Ashtanga Yoga also. Um, we heard many stories about Guruji, but it was... Uh, we went to the Shala first day, we saw Guruji and I didn't have any like special feelings that time. I was like, okay, this is the guy. Later, I felt like he be really became my guru. It was uh, a few years after that, but he was like, okay, this yoga teacher. We, we felt like special energy in the shala, like really like uh, high energy. Like I didn't, I wasn't like, never felt that kind of thing before. You know, went to the shala and. In the 90s, it was very common that people did lots of handstands in the practice. Guruji was sitting in the corner. He had his little seat there where he sometimes also fell asleep. He's, there's many pictures about that. He's sleeping and then suddenly he wakes up and like starts to shout something. Hey, you leg! <laughs> anyway, we used to do lots of handstands. There was in the primary series, we did maybe 40 or 50 handstands. And um, so we started Sun Salutation A. Usually we did the first without handstand and the second already with the handstand. So I did my first handstand and the energy was so strong in that little yoga shala that when I did the handstand I, I went over and my body was so light that I, I didn't feel any weight. I was just going up and boom, to all the way to the, <laughs> to the, to the wall fell down. I was like, wow, this is something. Um, I had good memories. There was some um, about Guruji's healing powers and also some uh, kind of tricks what he used with people. So after doing all this handstand, my, my wrist started to hurt and I took an x-ray and it was broken. I did so many handstands. Well, every day I think about 40, 50 handstands. And, um, okay, there's like, you, your wrist is broken, now you, you know, you cannot do this yoga for many months. So, after a few months, uh, we went to Mysore, I think it was the second time in 97. And I went to practice and I, I couldn't do the drop back. I could do already many things and I used, I keep my, I kept my wrist straight like this. So I did all the liftings like this. And I said to Guruji, I cannot do drop back, my, my wrist is broken. Oh, it was broken. It, <laughs> and it was still hurting, so yeah, it was a real thing. It was, I have a picture. So Guruji said, yeah, no, no, you do it. I'm like, no, Guruji, I'm not doing it. It's like, you do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I, it felt like, okay, I have to do it. This guy is serious. I, I can't avoid it anymore. And I did, and I went down. And I didn't feel anything. And my, my wrist was healed. <laughs> so maybe there was a pain, you know, memory of the pain in my mind, or it was still physical. I felt it physical. But something, and it was gone. And never after that, any wrist pain <laughs> in my life. Um, there was also... Guruji was always strict that 
we had to practice even if we, if we were a little bit sick or you know somebody had fever i had a terrible stomach ache one day and it was you know it was hard i had a fever and i had a diarrhea and everything so i was like i have to go to practice guru just said you have to come you know you're sick but you practice <laughs> this is also purification so my friend, what my friend did, they, they took me out from the bed, carried me to the, to the bicycle, put me to the seat, and then they were pushing me to the shala. So there's a picture, <laughs> somebody took a picture when I'm on the bicycle, I'm like, mm, going to the shala to practice. And I, I went to the shala, and first maybe some salutation or second or third, I got so spaced out that I started to hold the wall like this. Like, oh. And Guru to say, okay, you go up. <laughs> Which means that, okay, you go up to the finishing. But that was, the, that was the time there was no way that you skip the practice. I have many good memories about Guru to you. He always tested us, you know, he, he didn't let us easy. If somebody was lazy or somebody had little pain somewhere, he was always, you have to do. And if, if it was a serious thing, then he said, okay, you go upstairs and you take rest. Uh, I never felt any bad adjustments, like maybe some people had some experience, uh, like a strong adjustments. And I always felt that he took very good care of us. And um, if I couldn't someday maybe do something, I said, okay, Guruji, I go to pray upstairs. And that was the way how to <laughs> could out, get out from the sala. So he said, I'm going to pray upstairs. Yeah, there's many good memories. And um, in 2000, there was a Patabichos workshop in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, Richard Freeman invited Patabichos. So it was the first time I went to America and uh, I met Guruji there. There was lots of people, maybe two, three hundred people. And that was the time I, there was a, there was this conference, but there was conferences a few times a week. And there was a one conference, it was in this Buddhist center. And somehow the, the time was, uh, not clear that there was maybe two times okay this time conference and this time conference and people got confused and when we went to the conference there was maybe five or ten people only and usually there was a hundred or hundred people so there was only a few people and Guruji was okay he, he was sitting in this beautiful chair it's like okay so we are only five but let's start and so I decided to write this paper and questions, like 10 questions for what I can ask, because when you, when the guru is sitting there, you, maybe your mind is empty and you cannot do anything, <laughs> you just listen. But I had these questions in my paper, and then guru just started to talk, and he talked, and he went through my first question, and second question, and third question, and all the questions, without knowing my questions. <laughs> and I was just looking at this paper like, you know, this, this guy went through my questions. <laughs> Maybe they were very you know, basic, basic questions. But anyway, and, and also what happened was after that, I felt different connection with Patabi Choice. I felt like he, he became closer and he started to talk with me and know me. I went to Mysore, he gave some gifts and he gave some lungis and maybe some, even some cheap jewelry or some. And uh, yeah, there was one, one time there was this, somebody was selling this cheap, you know, jewelry is what they have in India. And it's like, a, you know, fake stuff. I came in, he was like, hey, Petri, you came. And then he took some jewelry and gave to me. <laughs> but yeah, there's many good stories. And last time, Last time I saw Patabi Choice was um, in February 2009, when he was already very sick. And uh, 
I went two times to see him in a, in his his room and we talk. And it was just beautiful because he was yoga teacher from the beginning to the end. So even the last days when he was alive, he was still talking about how many students is there, is everything going when in Helsinki. Like it was all about yoga. So he didn't care about money or position or anything. He was it was all about who is practicing there and how is going to and how many people and you know. It was beautiful time with him. I have lots of good memories. Mm-hmm. <laughs>